Con men, how are you doing? This video is somewhat of a branch off from a previous video that I've done on this channel. That video is the render slash it spot settings for YouTube that unlocks the VP9 setting, which I won't really go into that much depth in this video because it is still available for you to watch if you want to go find out more about it. But I thank all of the positive feedback that I've received from that video. All around me should be different comments that you see right now of everyone saying that this has helped them, this has helped them improve their video quality, which is excellent, but there is unanswered questions as well. Now the process for this video, I'll try not to make it too long because there's a lot of individual components that slide into each other, basically deserves the respect as well as its own in-depth tutorial by itself. Pretty much not everything in this video is going to apply to you, not everything is going to be the same for you, everything is time stamped, so find the part that you're on. If you've got any questions further on from this video, leave it in the comment section down below, I appreciate it. Also, right now there is 97% of you who are not subscribed, who watch this channel. Now, I appreciate everyone coming down and viewing the content that I do, but I'm trying to hit that, that goal of a thousand subscribers, but we're well on track to get it by the end of the year, and that'll be excellent. Now, let's talk about the recording side of things here. What I use is a capture card, which is the Elgato 4K60 Mark II. I have a 1440p 120 frames per second screen. If you come into the top right hand corner, which is the open preferences part, you can see a few options. Now pretty much here, all we need to do is go to device, make sure the correct device is being captured with, the firmware is up to date and my video input is the exact same as my Xbox. Now, these are the settings you want to change. The HDMI color range is bypassed the same as the input. The input EDID mode is going to be internal and the EDID interval internal is default as well. Picture, I do not change any of this as I change it all in Premiere Pro in post-production which I'll show you in just a second. The recording side of things, I save all this to a 3 terabyte hard drive. Of course, I've used up a lot of terabytes so far so I'm just going to keep it there. My video encoder is my graphics card so that's what I'm going to use, the RTX 2060. I don't have a HDR recording monitor, I don't have a HDR screen so I'm not going to enable that in any way. And the format that I'm going to be recording at is 1440p at 60 frames per second. If you only have a 1080p monitor, change this to 1080p 60 frames per second. The bit rate I'm going to leave at 30 megabytes per second. And the reason for it is very simple because of YouTube recommendation. Now, pretty much if we come to this website right here, there's a bunch of areas that YouTube wants you to look at when recording and rendering stuff out to their website. Pretty much what we're going to be looking at here is the bit rate, which if we come down, have a look at the settings here, the SDI is what the majority of us are going to do. But if you've got HDR recording, this is what you're going to be focusing on here. Pretty much for 1440p, which is how you unlock the VP9 codec, which is the better side of the encoding that YouTube uses rather than the AVC1, which is what is given to the majority of low end YouTubers. But VP9 is safe for the higher end of YouTubers, but there's a way to get around it, which is by in uploading your video in 1440p or higher to unlock that VP9 codec, and that's what we're going to do. Don't worry if you're only recording at 1080p though, as in Premiere Pro, we're going to project settings out to be a 1440p resolution. So if you can only record in 1080p, just record in 1080p. The microphone that I'm using is currently the Rode NT USB microphone. It's a really good microphone and I do it in AT input gain because I do not want this microphone to clip at any points during the recording. So I just reduce the gain a little bit to make sure that I don't and just increase it if it's needed inside a post. That is how we record through the Elgato Capture Card. Pretty much how I record through the PC as well. If we come to, I use NVIDIA, there is OBS as well, but again, OBS is its, its own separate ball game. So I'm just gonna leave that as it is. What I use for NVIDIA is the NVIDIA Shadow GeForce Experience. Pretty much here, I'm currently recording already, is that if we go to settings, we can see that I've got custom at 1440p HD, 60 frames per second, 25 megabits per second. And that's all I do. This is pretty much just the idea behind it and that's what I use. If not, I go over to this cogwheel, make sure that my recordings is being saved into a decent location that's got enough space and that my audio is being recorded at 70, which is my system sound, which is Discord, which is gameplay, etc., etc., etc. If I need to make sure Discord's a little bit louder, I'll turn down my game volume just so it's not really getting that issue. It's got the Rode NT-USB Mini, 
and my volume again is at 80%. Down here, it will be saying whether or not you want to create a single track or a multi-track. You always want to click the separate the audio files because that puts in two layer tracks, the microphone and the system sounds. So that is how I record on PC. <laughs> so now that we've recorded some footage, okay, we've got our stuff ready, we've got some decent gameplay and we want to start editing it and put it into Premiere Pro. Pretty much what we need to do here is create a new project as simple as this. I'm going to name this as test because this is what we're doing. This here needs to be set to CUDA is what I use. Timecode, audio samples, DV, scratch, same as project and ingest settings. Just leave them ticked. Okay, I don't mess with any of those settings. Now we've come to this. Of course, your, your workplace will be looking a little bit different than mine. I've currently tested it and kind of like changed some f stuff about so it suits me. What we need to do is come over to the import media to start right click and click import or go up to file go down to import click there i'm going to go to the location that this stuff is saved at which is the 20 win street that me and my buddy were having and we're going to come to this bit right here before we click anything if you do record through the elgato capture card you will be met with names that are suited to what you call the app. So if we go back into the capture card real quick and down here, you can see that you've titled and game titled your recording, okay? If you don't change this like me, you're gonna be met with files all with the same name. You can see here that we've got Modern Warfare Warzone, Modern Warfare Warzone live commentary. Modern Warfare, what, yeah, and the reason why this is an issue, especially when you're working with Premiere Pro, is that you need to make sure that you rename these files before you put them in because if you've got two name files going into one project, let's say you've got this gameplay and you've got another gameplay, both named the exact same. Premiere Pro at points does get very confused and start selecting audio from the other track that you didn't even edit inside of your timeline. It's very weird, I don't know why it does it, but it gets confused. So you've got to make it very easy from Premiere Pro and say, right, it's looking for the 20 win MP4 file. It is there, nothing else is there, that's called that, I'm going to select that. So once we import this, we're going to be met with some files in the import section right here, but we don't have a timeline just yet. What we need to do right here is go up to file, new, and then go to sequence. Right here, you're going to be probably met with a bunch of available presets. If you don't have any custom ones, let's make one right now. You're going to come down to the AVC HD and you're going to go down to the 1080p 60. Now, once you've clicked on that, you're going to go up to settings. You're going to change this editing mode to custom. You're going to change this time base to what you record it at. So me personally, 60 frames per second. And now we're going to change this video frames rate size. Okay. To 2560 to 1440. That's what you're going to change it to. Very important. Leave this as square, no fields, 60 time code, 48,000 hertz, iframe only, MPEG, and leave everything else. I'm just going to untick that because this is what I usually do and leave everything else there. Pretty much then go over to tracks. You don't need these 5.1s, so we're just going to pretty much delete those and we're going to keep those pretty much as they are. So we're going to save the preset name to whatever it is. So let's just call it YouTube. 60 fps okay boom click that and then it should show you as an option down in the custom section right here that's youtube 60 frames per second name it to whatever you want we're just going to go test again click enter you'll be met with this option right here down here the reason why i use premiere pro over everything going is for the synchronization feature now this feature is incredible if you're a person like me that does live commentary over games this i'll show you what i mean what you want to do you want to click and drag your actual video file into here now if you're like me and you've gone onto 4k capture and it, it's automatically recorded into separate tracks so you got one track for your voice overlay and you got one track for the game audio what you'll see right here is that you've got three tracks one which is this one that's merged together with the actual video file is currently an issue because that is both your game and your live streaming commentary. Eventually you want to remove that and have those two are separate as it gives you the most leeway and functionality and the most corrections you can make. You want to select all of it. Now, bearing in mind 
that first track has our voice and game in there and these two have our voice and game in separate. If we highlight everything by clicking and dragging it to create a block, a box so it's all white, right click on that sequence that right there and go over to synchronize. Click synchronize and because that original audio with both the game and the live commentary is in audio one, the A1 right there, I don't know why I'm pointing and you can't see it, in track one, you want to click OK. And what that's going to do is that it's going to perfectly sync up. With this, it's actually recorded it perfectly to begin with. Excellent, it's exactly what I want to see. This is actually recorded quite nicely, but you see how it's all synced up? All you want to do then is pretty much clean it up, take some things away, go back to the beginning, see if it's all matching up by zooming in. It all matches up fine, and you'll be met with this. It's hardcore when I die fucking 500 times on this. You'll die just the same amount, you might just brilliant what you want to do now is pretty much go through it and unlink this original track i've got it as a hotkey but pretty much right click go to unlink and then delete that at merge file with both your game and live commentary delete that pull those two up and you're ready to go we need to get into color correction and audio editing click on your video file this is what i use for pretty much every call of duty gameplay as you can see right now the current audio right here it's pretty good. Okay, it's recorded on my Xbox. It's not too bad, but it could be a little bit better. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna click on that. We're gonna go over to color. Once we're on color, we want to go on to creative in this Lumetri color section over here. Now, if you don't have color up here and you can't see, go to window, window workspaces and go down to color. Okay, or edit workspaces if you can't see there. Then go to creative on the Lumetri color, which is, if you don't see that, it's right there. Make sure it's clicked on. Now here, we're going to set the sharpen to 20. That's gonna just make sure those lines are a little bit more crisp. The vibrance, we're gonna set up to five, which will bring a bit more colors out. But the main thing that's gonna change all the colors is the saturation, which is what we changed to 105. And that just makes all the colors pop a little bit out, a little bit more. Now, if we turn this up a little bit too much, as you can tell on screen right now, it's all looking a little bit weird. Okay, so we don't want it to look too out of place. We just want that little bit extra color in there than the original grayish kind of tinge. Now, if we keep playing this across, you can see that the wording, because of the sharpen function, it's kind of cleaned it up a little bit. The words on the screen are a little bit more crisp. Everything else, if you think that's a little bit much, too much for yourself, turn it down a little bit. You know what I mean? Play around with it. Now, we've got the audio settings for the actual gameplay and we've got the audio settings for the voiceover. Now, the voiceover is what I already have a preset towards to. We select the audio track that we want to change, the live commentary, and go over to the audio tab. We can see essential sounds. Again, if you don't see it, go into window, essential sounds, blah, blah, blah. Now that we click on this, I already have a preset which I have saved, which is the Rode NT12. I'm going to click on this. But what I do, and this again deserves its own video, so I'm, not, I'm just going to breeze over this. The loudness I'm going to auto match to, because that brings it up to a level that is suitable to listen to on YouTube. If you still think it's a bit quiet, right click on this, go to audio gain, and then turn this up by adjusting the gain by so what. Okay, now go to repair, this is why I have reduced noise at all point. 0.8, reduce rumble at 7.6, DS, which is the S sounds, of course, the dynamics, which is the compressor side of things. I only have this one because I already recorded with a compressor already. I reanalyzed to make sure it's actually analyzing the clip to put the dynamics on there. The EQ, I set this to podca podcast voice at five and the clip level volume, I've already turned this up. So it's essentially the same as right clicking, going to audio game. I've just turned up the game clip basically turn up the voice clip so that it matches and you want to keep this up here but not clipping the gameplay audio if i feel like this is a little bit too loud all i'll do is right click on this go to audio game and go to minus five minus ten etc 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 and you can see the waveforms just shrink a little bit okay and that should bring a decent level on both sides we've done that we've done the color correction We've got the frame rate size got done. We've got everything like that. But I am going a little bit too ahead, especially for my 1080p people out there. This is footage that's been recorded at 1440p. So it's the native resolution to the actual sequence. But if you've recorded at 1080p, you're going to come across this. Okay. Here, what you need to do 
is right click on your video file and go to set to frame size not scale to because scaling will bloom it out and it'll make it look awful what you want to do is set to frame size and what that'll do is essentially put this from 100 to 133.3 if you're recording at 1080p it'll just basically set it so there's no black bars anywhere now that we've done this now that we've fixed up all of this pretty much all i'm going to do is clean this up a little bit i'm just going to find a section that i like of course there's so many key bindings out there that i can use and i think this is deserved of its own little video file if you get really good key binds it's going to speed up the workflow tremendously trust me now that we've got our video file right here and we're happy with it we like how it sounds we like the game clip etc okay now that we've got this what we need to do now is the export settings feature now to get the access to the vp9 we need to make sure that we're rendering out at 1440p or higher we're going to go to file we're going to go to export we're going to go to media from this point remember what we've referred to back here about the recommended bitrate and stuff like this you can follow along with this mp4 is what we need we need an aac audio codec we need a h.264 with a high profile progressive stand two consecutive b frames this is all linked to obs by the way but again it needs its own video variable bit rate frame rate size etc 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 if we come back here we can see that format needs to be changed to h.64 h.264 sorry preset we're just going to leave at match source high bit rate because you won't have any customs right now the output name is going to be put towards where we want it to be put to save it somewhere test click save we want to make sure that the video and the audio is being selected we can come down to this area right here now if we make this just a little bit bigger the basic video settings is that you want it to be at 2560 by 1440 now if it's not it's going to be linked to your sequence settings and so it's going to be wrong there make sure you go back in the video right now to make sure that you've got the project files all set up right if not all you need to do uncheck this change this move this up and down okay simple as that frame rate needs to be 60, 60 or at least matching what your source is which is important if you've recorded everything at 24 frames per second you wonder you need to leave it 24 frames per second including your sequence settings your progressive field order the aspect square pixels stat tv standard which is powerful for me because it, i'm in europe profile this is what you want to change you want to untick this and go to high not high 10 i think that's hdr you want to leave it high and the level is 5.1 if you want to turn this up to 5.2 feel free but 5.1 works well for me render at maximum depth clicked on now this is where it is very suitable to your pc if you've got really long rendering times leave it on vpr1 if you've got not too bad and you've got an all right pc put it on two pass what that'll do is render it once and render it again it'll look a little bit better but it won't be crazily amount i put it on two pass because i've got the pc power and i'm going to set this to 24 over 24 that's target that's max that's what we need because youtube wants that and it's only going to compress it if you go higher use maximum render quality all is good you want to save this by coming to this button right here click save preset change it to whatever tile you want okay and next time you come into this it will be available right here now you want to hit export and let it export and there you have it i know this was on the longer side of my videos and i apologize but i feel like it's important to address all these different issues because the previous video did so well but there is some unanswered questions so we're going to look through those right now because when i did the q a for the for my pc build it really did help people which is by lucas yo can i get the video on listed and then when i get the codec i can put it on public yes absolutely pretty much what i do when i upload a video to youtube i set it to unlisted anyway and then leave it for a couple of hours to make sure it's encoded to vp9 now the trouble about vp9 is that it doesn't come on straight away it will take a few hours a couple of hours even a day sometimes so when you've uploaded that video i put it on unlisted i wait until it's changed uh, changed changes to a vp9 codec or at least processed at hd quality then i can put it on public caleb i uploaded a video from a 4k render was initially 1080p okay and it still shows up as an avc in a max res of 1080p does it take time for this to change to vp9 or have i done so wrong yes it takes a couple of hours to do this if you if you've initially recorded at 1080p upscaling that two levels is high is very high and it's not always required it's probably 
doing more bad than good. Just upgrade it to 1440p and you should be fine. It's 2K instead of 4K and it does take a little bit of time. Make sure that those render settings are correct. Check to this video. If it, you don't run Premiere Pro, if you run something else, transfer those over. Hopefully that does help you, but it does take a little bit of time as well. Hope that helps. Jack, will this work if I record in 4K? And also, could you make a video on using the software that would be very helpful? I have now have it downloaded already. I am just not sure of how to use it. Okay, DaVinci Resolve is definitely a tricky one to master. I used it, but a lot of the time I was trying to figure out proxies and figure out ways to make sure that the software run. Because a lot of the time for DaVinci Resolve, it requires a very powerful PC. It's difficult, especially when you start going into like fair light and you start going into the aspect of the weird boxes that you have to match all the way up. But yes, I can make a software video if that's what people want, but I primarily work in Premiere Pro. But will it record if I work in 4K? Yes, absolutely. Anything 2K and above. Mia. Meonminus, I'm sorry if I botched the name wrong, I'm sorry. Uh, pretty much, I record my video with 1080p and re render it at DaVinci with 1440p. Brilliant. Can I get a VP9 on my video when I upload it to YouTube? Absolutely. Make sure your project settings are set to 1440p. Make sure you upgrade that or bloom that out or upscale it to 1440p. If you're just rendering it at 1440p, it will work when you upload that to YouTube. Okay, thanks guys. I appreciate everyone coming by this video. I thank you if you've got to this point already. Hit that subscribe button if it does help you. Leave a comment if you've still got some questions or if it did help you. I do appreciate those comments that say, yes, this worked. Thank you very much. <laughs> but yeah, I hope this helps some guys. These are just my settings that I use to record my gameplay footage because right now, season five of Call of Duty is not out right now and I don't want to make any more loadout videos right now surrounding season four. So when that drops, I will be making videos again around that subject, but I appreciate you guys stopping by. I hope you have a nice, wonderful time figuring out and working out how to use this stuff. Because it is complicated, but over practice you will get it. Right guys, I appreciate it. Thank you very much and I shall see you all in the next one. Bye bye.